Hello, ninth standard students. In this online class, we will be completing exercise 12.2. In Heron's formula, in total there are two exercises, 12.1 and 12.2. Let us look at the second question of exercise 12.2. Radha made a picture of an aeroplane with colored paper as shown. Find the total area of the paper used. So, what you see in this diagram are five parts of the plane. It is already mentioned. Part 1, which is the nose of the plane. Part 2, the body of the plane. Part 3, the tail of the plane. You have part 4 and part 5. So we have to calculate the area of this entire plane by calculating individually the areas of these parts. Let us see how to do it. These are the parts of the plane. I have just segregated it for you all. Like I said, this is the nose of the plane. If you look at the nose of the plane, it is an isosceles triangle. Because AB is given as 5 cm, AC is mentioned as 5 cm and the base is 1 cm. So two sides of this triangle are equal. So it is an isosceles triangle. But since the height is not known, you will use Heron's formula to find the area of this part 1. Then we move to part 2. Part 2 is rectangular in shape. B, C, Q, P is rectangle. So you will use the area of a rectangle to find the area of part 2. Then comes part 3. This is part 3 which is the bottom of the plane, the tail. It is in the shape of a trapezium. I have mentioned here or because there are two ways of solving part 3. We will solve the area of this trapezium in the coming slides. Then you have part 4 and part 5. These are the wings of the plane. It is a triangle, a right angle triangle. These sides are already mentioned. So we have to calculate the area of these two triangles. Let us see how to do it. Now, area of part 1. I have segregated it. So, like I said, this is a triangle in which you are going to use Heron's formula. So, the first step is calculating the value of S. So, semi-perimeter. Now, in this, semi-perimeter is the sum of all the sides divided by 2. So, you have the sides as 1 centimeter, which is the base. 5 cm and 5 cm. So when you add them and divide by 2, you get a fraction that is 11 by 2. So students here, the semi-perimeter is 11 by 2 and you either keep it as a fraction or you could write it in the form of a decimal number and then solve it. I have left it as a fraction and solved it. Now use the formula for area of uh, now use the formula, now use the Heron's formula, S, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C, all of them under the root sign. So you have 11 upon 2, 11 upon 2 minus A which is 1, 11 upon 2 minus 5 which is the value of B and 11 by 2 minus 5 which is the value of C. Now you write 11 by 2 as it is. You cannot solve this directly. You have to find the LCM. So the LCM of 2 and 1 is 2. So that is what you write down here. So the numerator becomes 11 minus 2. That is equal to 9. Likewise, you solve this. 11 upon 2 minus 5. Nothing is here in the denominator. That means it is 1. Find out the LCM. The LCM is 2. So, when you solve it, it becomes 11 minus 10 upon 2, which is 1 by 2. The same answer you are going to get here. Students, I hope you are noting this down in your notebook. 
I want you all to write down these steps. Now, let us take out the square root. Now, this it can be split up in this manner. 11 upon 2 can be written as 11 into 1 by 2. Because 11 into 1 is 11, so it becomes 11 by 2. Similarly, 9 upon 2, I have written it down as 9 into 1 by 2. And then you have 1 by 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 that you are mentioning it out here. So, you have the numbers inside the square root as 11 into 1 upon 2 into 9 into 1 by 2 into half into half. Now, let us take out the square root of this number. It is not, it's not perfectly divisible. So, you cannot cancel anything. So take out the square root. You know that square root of half into half means one half will come out. Then square root of half into half means another half comes out. Square root of 9 is 3. So when you solve it, you get the answer as 3 upon 4 root 11. Please work this out on your own. 3 upon 4 root 11. In the earlier online classes, I have shown you how to calculate the square root of a number by division method. So you will find out the square root of root 11 by division method, by long division method, and you get the answer as 3.31. Multiply these numbers and you get this as the approximate value. So 2.48 centimeters square is the area of the first part. That is the area of this triangle, the nose of the plane. Now we will calculate the area of the second part. That is the body of the plane, which is in the shape of a rectangle. Let us have a look. Area of part 2. In rectangle PQCB, they have given the length of the rectangle as BP, which is 6.5 cm, and the breadth of the rectangle PQ as 1 cm. So, area of the rectangle, length into breadth, substitute the value 6.5 into 1, you get the answer as 6.5 cm square. This is relatively easier. You just have to find out the area of the rectangle. So with this, we finish part 1 and the second part, both the areas we have calculated. Now let us look at the third part. So the third part is in the shape of a trapezium. Let us calculate the area of that trapezium. Now let us calculate the area of the base of the plane. I want you to pay attention out here. This rectangular shape, this rectangular part is actually resting on this trapezium. It is resting on the base. Whatever is this distance, the same will be this distance. So from here to here, it is one centimeter since it is resting on this trapezium PQ, PQ will also be 1 cm. Now it is mentioned in the diagram that PS is equal to 1 cm. That is also given. This side of the trapezium is given. They have also given this side of the trapezium QR that is 1 cm. And the base of the trapezium is given 2 cm. So, how do you calculate the area of this trapezium? Like I mentioned, there are two methods. What we will do is a construction where you draw QT parallel to PS. So, what we are doing out here is we are going to prove this quadrilateral PQTS to be a parallelogram. So, 
how do you prove quadrilateral PQT as a parallelogram? So construction, draw QT parallel PS. Then we know that PQ is parallel to ST already because it is a trapezium and in a trapezium, these two sides are parallel. PQ is parallel to SR. So PQ will be parallel to ST because of S dash T dash R. So in quadrilateral PQTS, PQ parallel ST and QT parallel PS because of construction. Therefore, this quadrilateral PQTS is a parallelogram. So that is the first thing that you need to prove. Now use the properties of a parallelogram. Students, you know that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides will be congruent. So that is what you're going to write first. So which are the opposite sides? PQ is opposite to ST. So if PQ is one centimeter, then ST will also be one centimeter. So we get the value of ST equal to one centimeter. Similarly, the other opposite side. You know that PS is 1 cm. So which is opposite to PS? It is QT. So PS equal to QT that is 1 cm. So we got the area of this parallelogram. What we have done out here is after finding out the area of this parallelogram, we have taken another line like this PT. So if you take PT parallel to QR, you get the same thing. This also becomes a parallelogram PQRT. So you have PQTS as a parallelogram and at the same time even PTRQ is a parallelogram. So what happens if you draw these two lines like this? You will notice that these three triangles will automatically become equilateral triangles. So, 1 cm, 1 cm, 1 cm. This is also 1 cm. This is also 1 cm. Here also it is 1 cm. Same is the case with this. All the three sides are equal. So, you have three equilateral triangles. When you add the area of these three equilateral triangles, you get the area of this quadrilateral PQRS. So, that is what we have done here. Area of one equilateral triangle, you know the formula, it is root 3 upon 4 into side square. So it is root 3 upon 4 into 1 square and the value of root 3, 1.73. So 1.73 into 1 upon 4, this is what you get. This is the area of one equilateral triangle. But you have how many equilateral triangles? 3. So you multiply by 3 and this is the area of the base of the plane. You could also do it like this. You draw the height PM and you take the height QN. This entire thing is 2 cm. From year to year it is 1. So from year to year it becomes 1. Whole thing is 2. So this becomes 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. But this is fairly a very, uh, this is a lengthy method. It is easier to do it by this method. But students, you are free to do whichever method you want. So, we have found out the area of the third part by using the formula area of an equilateral triangle is root 3 upon 4 side square. Let us now move in to the fourth and the fifth part of this plane. Area of part 4 and part 5. Now, these are the wings of the plane. The wings of the plane are in the form of a right angle triangle. They have given you from year to year the distance is 6 and from year to year it is 1.5. So use the formula for area of a right angle triangle that is half into base into height, half into 6 into 1.5. Similarly half into 6 into 1.5. You get the area as 4.5 centimeters square. This is the area of part 4. When you multiply it by 2, 
you get the answer as 9 cm square. So, this is the area of part 4 and part 5. Now, let us look at the total area of the paper plane. The total area of the paper plane is addition of the areas of all the parts. In total, there are five parts. So, these are the, this is the approximate value. This is the area of part 2, which is a rectangle. Part 3, which is a trapezium. This is part 4, one of the right angle triangle. And this is part 5, the other right angle triangle. When you add, this is what you get. So, the total area of the paper plane is 19.28 centimeters square. So, students, this was the second problem of exercise 12.2. So, with this, we conclude both the exercises from the chapter Heron's formula. Thank you.